Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. And you can already tell I'm smiling cheek to cheek because I just received the brand new Avada 2. I can't tell you how excited I am to tear open this box and do an unboxing. I'll also do a comparison with the last Avada model just so you get a feel for the differences between them. But I want to get this thing out of the box so I can charge it and get outside and start flying it. Now, this product is the latest release from DJI in their FPV series. They had the original product, which was called the DJI FPV. They came out with the Avada, and now the Avada 2. And there are some changes that I think are pretty important with this new product that I'll get into a little bit. So let's get the box open and quit talking here. <laughs> All right, so I've got a slicer here. I'm going to open up the box. Man, I'm telling you, every time a new drone shows up, I just can't wait to get inside and start flying the thing. All right, let me get the wrapper off here. Now, the kit I'm going to show you today is the Flymore combination, which includes the drone and includes a few other things. It's got the charging hub where it has three batteries that can simultaneously charge those three batteries, not at the same time, but in order. So it'll charge one, move on to the next, move on to the third one, and it determines which of those batteries needs the least amount of charge and charges that one one first. So that's a charging hub. It also includes the motion controller and the new goggle. So it's a complete kit to get me started. And I always recommend if you're looking at a new drone, always compare the basic kit to the Flymore combination because most of the things that are included in this Flymore combination are things you're going to end up looking for anyway once you start flying the drone. For example, most drones come with one battery. I promise you when you get it up in the air and start flying it, you're going to have so much fun, you're going to want more batteries. So finding a kit like this that has all those built in or at least included means that you've got all of the products you need to get started, get out there and fly and have a whole lot of fun. All right, so enough talking again. Let me get into the box. All right, so I just cut through that. I'll open up the box now on the fly more combo on the front you've got a picture of the drone on the back you've got a picture of what's included in the kit a lot of specifications on the side typical DJI presentation all right here we go oh there's a case it comes with a case all right that's a that's a nice little approach there let me get this out oh there it is so everything's in the case now I know it seems like a small deal to have a case but I love when they include a case because a drone has a lot of components. You have the drone, you have the controller, you have the batteries, you might have cables. Having a case like this protects all that so you can take it with you out in the field. But more importantly, it keeps it organized because I can't tell you the number of times I've gone out in the field and I realized, oh my gosh, I left the cable home or I didn't bring that second battery. So having a case like this keeps everything organized, it keeps it in one place, and it just it ensures that you're bringing everything along that you need to fly that afternoon. All right, so let's get inside and take a look. All right, on the side of the case, there's an expansion pocket on both sides. These are big enough for a water bottle or a ham sandwich. Whatever you want to put in there, you can stick in the sides. It's got a nice shoulder strap as well, so if you want to carry it over your shoulder, that's great. All right, let me open her up here. <laughs> Heavy-duty zipper on the front. The material on the outside of this is very similar to other DJI cases where it's water-resistant. It's not waterproof, but it'll, it'll keep everything inside nice and dry, and it resists the water, so it'll kick off the water. All right, here we go. Just let me catch my breath a second because every time I open up a new drone, I just need a minute alone with the drone to sort of see what's going on. So <laughs> here we go. Oh boy, this looks good. All right, so there's the Avada 2. Let me get that out. Oh boy, here we go. Put that down over there. What do I got here? I don't know. Let's take a look. Oh, this looks like the goggles. Oh, 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 oh. what is here? Oh, there's the charging hub with two batteries in it. So I imagine there's a battery in the drone already. And then, boy, I like this. There's compartments inside there for everything. So the drone slides up here. It looks like the goggles slide in over here. The battery uh, charging hub slides in there. And there's a pocket over here for all kinds of accessories. Let me pull those out. Oh, that's the controller. Wow, that's a lot smaller than the last motion controller. All right, we're going to do some comparisons on those as well. Let me make sure I get everything out. All right, that's it for the main components. Now there's another pocket up top here with a whole lot of other stuff. Let me zip this open. Oh boy, boy, is there a lot of stuff in here. All right, there's all the good stuff up top. There's some other stuff. What else we got? That's it. So I like the fact that there's a nice pocket up top because you can put all the doodads up there, all the things that are extra go in the top, and then you've got perfect compartments down the bottom to put all the important things, like the drone and the controller and the charger. All right, so there you go. Now, I'm going to open these individually. I'm going to save the drone to last because that's, that's really the amazing part of it. So let me start off with the controller because it does seem a lot smaller than the last version. I can tell you already it's a lot smaller. So, boy, I like the feel of that. So here's the controller. 
and they've whoop, almost forgot there's a lanyard in there as well. All right, so the lanyard's important. If you've ever flown an FPV drone, your adrenaline's gonna be pumping, you're gonna be out there excited. You definitely wanna put the lanyard on the bottom of it and roll it around your wrist because when you're flying, if this thing flies out of your hand, it's gonna go flying. So you wanna make sure you don't damage that. But they've increased, well, actually they've made it smaller but boy, everything falls right into your fingers where you'd want it to be. I love the fact that they've actually tightened up a little bit on this notch up here because the original controller didn't have this top flange on it. It was just the bottom, but this one you can pull forward to break. And I like the fact that they've made it smaller. So it may be a challenge for people with big sausage fingers, but for me, I fit in there just fine. And across the top, you got the joystick and your buttons and everything else. And I'll, I'll do a detailed review of this as a separate clip, but okay, so there's a smaller uh, controller and that's the motion controller. Again, it's gyroscopically controlled. So inside there, there's digital gyroscope. So as you move it around, the drone mimics whatever movements you make with the gyroscopic controller. So beautiful product there. All right, I'll tell you what, let me, let me hold off on this just another minute. Let's start on some of the accessories. All right, here's the charging hub, which again is something that DJI innovated a couple of years back with their, uh, I think it started with the original Air. Maybe it was even one of the Mavic series, but essentially they've been building these for most of their drones. And I recommend this charging hub for so many different reasons. For example, when you drop the batteries in there, it has intelligence built in. There's a controller in the bottom of it where it actually interrogates the batteries, figures out which battery needs the least amount of charge. And when you plug this into a charger, it's gonna charge that battery first, so it gets you back out the door quickly. When that battery's full, it moves on to the next one that needs the least amount of charge, and finally on to the third one. It also protects your batteries, which is a great thing. And this battery hub, just like the last version of battery hubs that came out, will actually do a sharing of the additional power. So for example, if you're flying for half an afternoon, you've got one battery at 60%, the other two batteries are 20%, you can put them in the hub, put it in sharing mode, and it'll actually take that 20% from those batteries and move it over the one that's got 60%. So it's actually filling up the battery that needs a charge, which is pretty cool. All right, so that's the hub. I'll spend some time on that in a separate clip. Let's see what else we got. Oh, Odessican packs. Make sure you get rid of these. Don't leave these laying around. They look like candy packages. You don't want the kids eating those. So definitely get rid of those. All right, a ton of manuals right here. I won't open these, but DJI does an amazing job of explaining what you can do with the drone. They have safety information in here and a whole lot of other things that you'll want to read through. So before you put the Avada 2 up in the air, sit down and read these. I know it's a boring exercise, but I promise you there are features on this drone that are not intuitive, that you may not figure out on your own, and it's always good to read through the manual. All right, looks like I got a bunch of propellers here. And again, with the fly more combo, you get a lot of extra components that really enhance your flying experience because having extra propellers, trust, trust me when I tell you, when you're flying this drone, you're gonna clip a branch, you're gonna break a propeller, it's gonna get dirty. You're definitely gonna want extra propellers. All right, so, nope, not propellers. All right, here are the propellers. All right, Rick, what are you talking about? All right, so here are the propellers. You have one full set of extra propellers uh, in the kit. You have a tool to change those. That's an Allen wrench right there. And what have I got here? I got a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna have to open this up and take a look. All right, so spend a few minutes. Boy, these bags are really substantial. They're tricky to open. All right, I probably should speed this part up. All right, that looks like a, a little buffer. Maybe this goes on the goggles. I think it does for a little bit of extra cushioning. So I'll figure that out and explain it a little bit later. Okay, I've got a connection here, a USB connection here for your phone on the unit. So you can use this to actually, I think, enable a remote ID. I'm not sure. I've got to play with that. They may have actually built that into the unit where I can Bluetooth to it or Wi-Fi to it. But typically, this will plug in. It's a USB-C to female USB-A. You'll connect the cable from here to your phone to enable the remote ID. And then these are, I imagine, lenses that you can customize because... The, I'll get into the goggles in a second, but the goggles have a lot of adjustments. And one thing DJI did with their last version, which was a huge benefit, is that everybody's eyes are not set the same way in their head. So some people have close together eyes. Some people like me have these wide fish eye light, eyes that are further apart. And that distance between your eyes is called the IPD. It's the inner pupillary distance. And you want to be able to adjust that because if you've got goggles that have a fixed IPD and your eyes are pretty far out, you're not going to see that image very clearly. So they built in not only a focusing, which allows you to move the lenses up and back, but they also built in an IPD adjustment where I can spin them out or slide them out for these big fish eyes I've got. They also built in 
not built in, but included in the Flymore combination, lenses that you can have cut to a prescription. So if you've got, like I have um, certain issues with my eyes because I'm getting a little bit older, so I have prescription glasses, I can have these cut for prescriptions. I'm pretty sure what those are. So I'll play with those a little bit later. Another cable here, it's a USB-C to USB-C you can use to charge the unit. Now one thing I'm noticing right off the bat, and this is something people complained about before, is that the kit does not include a charger. So you're going to need a charger to charge this. And my recommendation is find a charger that's at least a 65 watt charger. Even better if you can find a 140 watt charger, you're not going to damage the unit, but you'll need at least 65 watts of charging capability to charge the batteries. Also find a charger that's got PD or power delivery technology built in, and that allows you to fast charge these batteries a lot quicker than a standard charger that doesn't have PD capabilities. All right, so you got to find a charger. I'll talk more about that in another clip. Let's take a look at the goggles because they've changed those dramatically and they're a whole lot better as far as resolution goes. In addition to that, they're also capable of viewing through. In other words, on the front of this, give me a second here. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh boy, oh boy. All right, so a couple of things right off the bat I can tell you. Oh man, oh man. Oh, this is really nice. Oh, we got a flap on the top here and the batteries on the back on the strap. So again, this is, this is a major, major upgrade over the last set of goggles. Um, you've got those two antennas on the front like we did last time. You've got two cameras up front now because like I'd mentioned, you can double tap on the side or you can use the controller and actually enable the front viewing a video on this thing. So when you're, when you're walking around with the last version, you had to pull the goggles up to sort of find where you were if you drop something to pick it up. With these, you can double tap it and open up that view from the front and those cameras will give you a view of what's in front of you. So you can leave the goggles on and walk around and not bump into stuff, which is pretty cool. I love the fact that they've got the battery on the strap because the last version, the battery was separate. You'd stick it in your pocket it. You'd have a cable dangling down. You'd always hit the cable when you get excited. So this one, the battery is self-contained. It's right in the back of the unit, which is great. So we're going to have to spend some time figuring that out. Boy, that's nice. Oh, and the last thing I want to mention is they've included a ratchet. Um, this is something you'll find in a lot of the VR goggles on the market today. It basically allows you, you can watch the goggles. See how I'm pulling them up? So it allows you to turn that ratchet, this little knob in the back, and that'll actually tighten the goggles on your face. It's a very professional way to do it. Plus, it gives you a really snug fit. They've built a nice cushion in the back here, so you've got padding on the back. I think the battery being part of the strap also gives you a better balance of the goggles. It seemed very light on the back on the last set of goggles, and the goggles are heavy. So I always found that they were pulling forward a little bit. With this, I'm hoping that that battery is going to balance out the weight of the goggles. But, oh boy, there's a lot going on here. So the goggles are uh, an incredibly cool part of this whole experience. And trust me, if this is the first time you're watching a video that talks about FPV flying, it's going to change your life. Because as much as I like flying camera drones that I can put up to 300 feet and look down at a landscape and take beautiful pictures and amazing video, flying FPV is like you're strapped into the drone flying around the countryside at 27 meters a second. So you're zipping through that countryside and you're dodging trees and you're slooping over a lake. It's like you're Superman. I can't put it any other way. It's an absolutely brilliant experience. It's an out-of-body experience in so many different ways so definitely give this a try and here's the best part and i know i'm getting excited here but the best part is if you're a camera drone flyer today getting into fpv with something like the avada or the avada 2 just makes it so easy because this controller is incredibly intuitive you put it on your hand like this and you point it in the direction you want to go you twist it to move side to side and fly around trees it's a great way to get into fpv all right enough about that let me take a deep breath because i'm about to pop open the avada 2. <sighs> Here we go. Calm down, Rick. Calm down. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Oh, man, this is sweet. All right, so they're they're sticking with a very, very similar design to the original Avada. Matter of fact, I have the Avada over here. Actually, I have both drones over here, so that was the last Avada. Here's the original FPV, which I still fly. I like this drone an awful lot, but... But look how big and bulky and bug-like that one is compared to these two beauties, which are tiny. Look how tiny they are. Now, the first thing you're going to notice, let me talk about this drone just for a second, because, boy, they've really streamlined the design of it. The, uh, the protectors around the propellers are larger, which is great. They've gone from a five-propeller design to a three-propeller design, and those propellers are a completely unique aerodynamic design. So I don't know if you can pick it up on camera or not, but they're curved and they've got sort of a tilt to it. So it's a tilt and a curve, which I'm sure is gonna move a lot more air. They're still using the duct system, like on the center whoops, 
where you're using this duct to redirect that air down that improves the efficiency of the propellers. And boy, I like the look of this thing. Now, a couple of differences uh, between them. First off, let me show you the two side by side. You can see it's a bigger drone, but it's much more nimble. Um, but it is larger and wider, which I'm sure is going to give it a lot more stability in the air. They've also beefed up the structure underneath. So if I'm looking at the bottom of this, look at these support beams that are on there right now to sort of protect the front of it. So I think this is going to be a lot more durable out there in the field. And if you look closely, these two on the front will protect your camera if you come up against a flat surface. Now, obviously, if you come up against something like a tree branch, it's going to smack into the camera. But I think you're going to have a lot more control and a lot more protection with this unit. Now, a couple of differences between them. Now, in a lot of ways, before I get into the differences, in a lot of ways, these are very similar. So even though it's an Avada 2, I don't know what we'd really call it a brand new product as much as an upgrade from the original Avada because a lot of the specifications are exactly the same. So from a basic spe specification perspective, the flight time on this one is going to be 23 minutes. That's the maximum flight time you're going to get. Now, we all know that depending on how you're flying, how fast you're flying, how much wind there is out there, how many tricks you're doing, you're not going to get a full 23 minutes, but it is an increase over what the Avada provided as far as airtime goes. It's using the brand new O4 technology for transmission. So OcuSync has gone through a lot of changes. This was three plus, this is four. Now, what four means for you is it gives you a better live view in the goggles. It also gives you a much more immediate view. So they've cut down the latency from around 30 milliseconds to 24 milliseconds milliseconds and what that latency will do is it, it's actually giving you a more immediate view of what's going on in the drone so when you're flying around trees at speeds of up to 27 meters per second you want to make sure that you're seeing exactly what the drone is seeing because if there's any latency or delay in that video feedback to you you could have actually smacked into a tree by the time you knew you smacked into the tree so they've improved the latency or they've reduced the latency on the brand new Avada 2 which I think is a really big deal now other than that, the cameras are better in the Avada 2 as well. So this was a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor, 155 degree field of view. This is a 1 over 1.7 inch sensor, which is a tiny bit bigger. It's going to give you better video on the unit. Same field of view, 155 degrees over here. So I know they're making a big deal out of the 155 degrees. You had that on the original Avada, but they did improve the camera, which is going to give you better resolution pictures. Not only ones you're recording to the unit, but ones you're seeing on your screen as well. I'm trying to think what else. Oh, the battery. So the battery is actually smaller as a capacity over here. The original one on the Avada was 2420 milliamp hours. This one is 2150. Now you might be thinking, why would they make it a smaller battery? Well, obviously it's a smaller drone. It's a lighter drone by 33 grams. So having a smaller battery gives me better flight time. It gives me the same speed. They're both 27 meters per second maximum speed, but I think the smaller battery makes it lighter. Again, the 33 gram difference. And it also gives me a more aerodynamic design. This one, as cool as it was when it came out, is still somewhat clunky from an FPV perspective. You've got this large body on the top, which is going to cause a lot of issues with the air passing through it. This one is a much smaller, much more sleek design, so I think this is going to be a lot more maneuverable in the air. But boy, I'll tell you, I can't get over, I can't get over new drones like this, and I can't wait to get this thing up in the air. Boy, the frame looks really, really solid, really resilient. Nice little guard on the front here on the camera. Let me take that off and take a look at the camera. <laughs> Yeah, that's a beaut. Look at that camera up front there. Isn't that beautiful? And then the battery in the back pops out. I'm not going to try and... Yeah, there we go. Battery comes out the back just like that. Two little pinches on the side. One of the complaints I had on the original unit and actually in the Avada, and I don't complain about much, but I was complaining about this quite a bit, is that the way the batteries went in is that you'd seat them, but then you had to make the connection yourself. So it was sort of a throwback to the FPVs that a lot of you build and fly on your own, where you've got a battery connection you've got to make. All the other DJI drones had an integrated battery connector. When you slid the battery in, it made the connection for you. With this one, you actually have to plug the battery in, which isn't a big deal, but unplugging the battery can be a pain in the neck because you got to get in there with your fingers and yank that thing out. With this one, they've gone back to that integrated battery design where once I slide the battery into the unit, it's locked into place and it's made the connection for me. So I like that an awful lot. And that's pretty much it. Now, I know I spent a lot of time doing the unboxing and the overview, but I wanted to give you a feel for what's included in the package and more importantly, what you're getting with the Avada 2 if the Flymore package is something you're interested in. I just did a brief comparison between these two. I will spend a lot of time 
comparing these in another clip and comparing all three of them in another clip because if you're looking for a ready to fly FPV drone, there's a lot of companies out there that make them. But what you're getting with the Avada 2 and the Avada and the original FPV is you're getting a drone from a company, DJI, that's been building this kind of technology for well over a decade. They understand gyroscopic control, they understand GPS coordination, they understand transmission technologies, video transmission technologies, reducing latency, giving you a brilliant picture on the, on the goggles. All of those things are difficult to do. They're incredibly hard to do. So finding a company that does one of those well is tricky. Finding a company like DJI that does all of them well and is constantly pushing the envelope is pretty amazing. And the last thing I'll mention about the brand new Avada 2 for all you camera drone flyers out there is that the tricks that you see people doing in an FPV drone, where they're spinning this way or flipping up like this, or better yet, that drift move where I'm standing there and the drone's coming at me and as it passes me, it spins, reverses direction, and then backs away from me. That drift move is incredibly cool. Well, guess what? This has it built in with the push of a button. So you can immediately become Johnny FPV out there in the field, flying up to a, a subject and spinning around with that drift move and pulling away. I'm, I can't wait to get out and try that. You're gonna be seeing that in a lot of my clips, but those kind of things are automations that are built into the drone that DJI provides to make it easy to fly an FPV. And if you're a camera drone flyer, that's something you're gonna to wanna to play with. The last thing I'll mention is they have improved the, not crash avoidance, but the awareness of the drone. So the Avada, the original Avada, had sensors on the bottom, which helped it navigate in areas where GPS wasn't great or indoors. This one has sensors on the bottom and sensors on the rear, which will improve that even better. So I'm gonna spend more time going into a detailed review. I just wanted to get the unboxing done today so you guys got a feel for it. I cannot wait to get this drone powered up and outside and start flying it. And I promise you, you're gonna be hearing an awful lot more about it. So thanks an awful lot for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed this unboxing. Again, this is a really exciting day here at the shop. Thanks again, and until next time as always, <laughs> happy flying. Mm -hmm.